It was a day of funerals in Istanbul. Turkey will take time to recover. It might not be possible for at least a generation. The dead were killed on the streets facing up to the military rebellion. <laughs> Clerics led the prayers, but the chief mourner was President Erdogan, the target of the attempted coup. He told them that he would root out the traitors. We will continue to clean the virus from all state bodies because this virus has spread. Unfortunately, like a cancer, the virus has enveloped the state. For a while on Friday night, the rebel military units seemed to be getting the upper hand. This was fighting on one of the bridges over the Bosphorus. In the end, the coup was defeated because it was badly organized, because only a section of the armed forces rebelled, and because on the streets it faced opposition, not support. A rebel soldier had to be rescued by the police after an angry crowd surrounded his tank. Supporters of the government are in no mood to forgive. More than 6,000 arrests have been made. Turkish media say that included around 90 generals and admirals. Throughout the day here in Istanbul, heavy security followed the president from funeral to funeral. Even as the dead are being buried, there's a sense of foreboding about what comes next. The country was already badly split between the president's supporters, overwhelmingly religious, and secular Turkey. Well, there's a lot of tension here and political as well as security choices ahead for the president. Is this a chance for him to try to reconcile with the opposition? This is a very disunited country. Or is it an opportunity for President Erdogan to crack down on those who oppose him? This was the funeral for a journalist and for a political campaigner and his 16-year-old son, all killed by gunfire from rebel soldiers. President Erdogan, lost in the crowd, said he knew them and wept. For his followers, he's a hero. They'll support his next moves. He wants to make himself into a strong executive president. His opponents thought he was dangerously authoritarian before the coup. Now they fear his iron fist. After the funeral, these Erdogan supporters demanded that Turkey bring back the death penalty for the plotters. He said those who betray the country must pay the ultimate price. The president has told his supporters not to leave the squares empty, and they're out again tonight. Turkey is fractured, and to make matters worse, it's involved in the wars across its borders in Iraq and Syria. Instability at home and the violent contagion of Middle East war. It is hard to think of a more dangerous mix for a country vital to the future of the Middle East and Europe. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Istanbul.